Hello everybody and welcome back to Operation Logistics where we are currently implementing a price for fuel. Now this is going to quickly run us out of money because we have no way to make money, but that's okay for right now. So let's go ahead and since we have our base fuel price and base fuel variance, let's just go into our business which is here. And then in the on day tick, we will generate a new price since at least here in the US the uh, gas stations are only allowed to change their fuel prices once per day. We're going to kind of quasi emulate that by doing it here. Now, all fuel in this world is going to have the same price. So there's going to be no variance between locations that are far flung, at least not for now. We may add that in later when we add in a better way to represent int threes, because I was thinking about adding in like regions. So we may make there be a regional fuel price. But for right now, we'll just do it this way, which is simply that um, we have our base fuel price and we have our we, we have our variance. So we're, we're going to need an actual fuel price. Do we do that here in the business or do we just do that in the balance? I think we'll do it here. So public float current fuel price equals 3f and we'll move this to regions if we do decide going to go that route later on and in fact i'm going to go ahead and add that to the to do's right now switch fuel price generation which is not spelled with a j fuel price generation to um region based once regions are in okay so that's in the to do's and we will get to that but for right now, we'll go back into the business, which is here. And then in the on day tick, we will go ahead and simply say balance dot current fuel price equals in parentheses base fuel price. Uh, we're going to need to do balance dot base fuel price times random dot range. And this is going to be negative balance dot base fuel variance to balance dot base fuel variance. So minus 25% to plus 25% of the $3. And every day it should generate a new price. Next, the question is, what are we using to currently update these up here? Is that being done in the business? Is that in the update? Yes, it is. Okay. So we're going to need another public TM Pro dot text mesh pro UGUI. And this is going to be fuel cost text. And we'll go ahead and assign that in the inspector while we're thinking about it. At least once it compiles. Okay. And then we will put that in right here, which would be, <laughs> it's currently called trains text. We might want to change that fuel price text. Okay, we'll go ahead and change that and save. There we go. Excellent. Okay, and then down in here, we're just going to need to say something along the lines of, it's currently just $3 and I don't like that. I need to come up with a way to communicate this. So something along the lines of fuel cost text dot text equals, and we're just going to do a string dot format It'll generate some garbage, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I like string dot format. It's nice and clean. So we're going to go ahead and do. Do we want there to be an icon there? Does TextMesh Pro have support for icons? That's actually something that I've been wondering and haven't looked up. TextMesh Pro icons. TextMesh Pro allows you to include sprites in your text via rich text tags. Sprites are regular bitmap textures, so make sure your resolution is high enough. You need a texture asset, so you create a sprite with a sprite editor, blah, 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 blah. And then you can assign them a tag, I assume? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. So we can do that, and that's probably going to be what we're going to do ultimately. But for right now... I think that we are simply going to do something along like this. Fuel cost zero. 
Helps if I hit the right button though. And then this is simply going to be balance.currentfuelprice.toString with currency formatting. Okay. There we go. I think we should be able to run this and see that our fuel price changes daily. And now that fuel price is per what exactly? Fuel cost of 27 cents? Hang on a moment, that doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right at all. What did I do? What did I do? Right. We need to do times one plus random dot range. And we're going to do, not F1, 1F plus random dot range. Because it was just multiplying it by negative 25% to 25%. This is going to then just change it or vary it by 25%. So that should work much better. 359. That's more like it. That's a bit on the high end. Maybe we'll change the base fuel to like 250. We'll see how that works. And we should probably turn the loading screen back on for now. So that we have that again. Okay. So let's uh, $2.81. Let's go ahead and run this for a full day. It's going to take a little bit of time to go a full day. Since it's 6 a.m. right now. And now it's noon. And now it's 11, and there we go. So the price actually dropped substantially to 206. But that's okay. So that's the current fuel cost, and the real question is, is that a fuel cost per hex? Like, does it cost us, like, here in the US, the fuel cost is per gallon, right? I imagine in most other places it's per liter or something along those lines, but um, it's per gallon here in the US, and the question is, does it take 75 gallons to go 75 hexes? Well, how much... But let's let's just see here. How many gallons of fuel can an average car hold? That's going to be important information. Okay, 12 to 16 gallons. Okay, so 12 to 16 gallons is what the average car holds. So if it if it goes 12 gallons, this is going to get really messy really fast. Cuz I was thinking we could, we could take, like, 75 divided by 16 to get how many hexes per gallon, but ugh, that's going to be rough. We're going to have two separate measurement systems, one for, one for distance, one for fuel consumption. I mean, maybe that's okay, because we could then have, like, a fuel efficiency metric, and we'd be able to upgrade vehicles with fuel efficient, like, fuel efficient components or... Perhaps just outright replace them with more fuel-efficient vehicles. But even so, our current range is measured in the vehicle in distance, right? So our, our total fuel is, in fact... Well, our, our, our actual fuel in the balance is set at, I believe, 75. We might want to nerf that. I don't know. We'll have to consider it. If we consider each of these... Well, have we determined how big each of these hexes actually are? Like, physically? So, like, how big the uh, the world hex is? I, I was kind of thinking that, like, a world hex would be something like a square mile. And then a biome hex would be something like... I mean, there's a lot more acres than that, but something kind of along that line. And then in here, each of these would be about the uh, size of a single plot of land, a standard sized one in like a city. But 
I I don't know. We, we've got kind of some wonky scales going on here. So we're going to have to try to consider how to rectify this. And I think the best way to do this, at least for right now, is to do something along the lines of this. Public float fuel efficiency equals 1.0f by default. And then when we do our on enter hex, on enter building hex here, um, we actually don't change our fuel here. Where do we change our fuel? Here. So fuel minus equals 1.0f times fuel efficiency. So the lower the fuel efficiency number is, the better. And then the higher it is, the worse. But we're, we're just going to use 1.0 as a base. So that way we can change it so that our, our 75 gets us further, but also is cheaper, right? So that that's okay. And now we don't actually have to do any sort of wonky conversions. We can just say, when we're down here, fuel plus equals 10.0f. Okay, um, we don't necessarily know that we're adding 10 fuel because of the clamp call. So I think what we should do Well, is that okay though? I mean, let let's think about this though. It's I'm going to pull up a calculator and this is going to be interesting because we've got say uh, we've, we've got a, a max fuel capacity of 75, right? So we've got, say, say we're completely empty. And the current, the current price is $2.80. And then we multiply that by 75. So to fill that tank would be $210. Is that a reasonable amount? Not amazingly. Not amazingly at all. That said, maybe it is. I have no idea how much it actually costs to fill a, fill up a delivery vehicle, like, say, a, a UPS delivery vehicle. It might be something similar to that. For right now, let's just go ahead and charge immediately. So, business... Do we not have access to the business? We have access to the balance but we have the time manager manager.business yes dot current funds minus equals and this would be manager.business dot balance dot current fuel price times 10.0 f so currently the way this is set up is if we are overfilling this, we do get charged for that. But I'm going to leave it like that for just a moment. Um, I might leave it like that for a while. In fact, I'll probably just add a to-do here, which would be remove the fact that you get charged for a whole 10 gallons of fuel if you are close to capacity and don't need it. Okay, so there's that in a to-do. And then we'll come on in here and where are we? There we are. And we'll come on down in here. And sure, this will work. We'll go ahead and buy this field. And we actually do need to demolish the field, which is a little awkward. We'll build a postal office out in the middle of nowhere. Create a route, select the route, and we're going to head... Actually, I want to head this direction. Like so. Okay, and then we will create a vehicle, select the vehicle, transfer the vehicle onto there. And now, when the vehicle returns to the depot, you should see our funds going down. So there goes the vehicle on the route happily trucking along. I'm going to go up to full speed here.
And yeah, we did indeed get charged for fuel. Excellent. And our current fuel cost is 254. We were charged again there for the fuel that we used. And the day tick happens, and the price went down to 228. I like it. So we've got a good fuel system, or at least a basic a basis for a good fuel system. I do need to put a cut in here though, so next episode we might be working on pickup and maybe a coverage map mode for routes. We'll see about that. That that may be happening, but in the meantime, subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time. After I finish uh, punching my microphone. That's always the best thing. <laughs>